Hello, I'm Steph and I've looked after Rob Roski's on and off for most of my adult life and I also really enjoy researching into Rob Roski care. I wanted to make a series of videos on handling or not handling Rob Roski hamsters because I see a lot of questions about taming and handling them and because they are such small and fast animals so they're quite different to handling say a Syrian hamster. So in this short series I will talk about whether or not to handle a Rob Roski, alternatives to handling Robos, types of interaction and taming and in this video about building your own confidence handling and taming a Roborowski hamster and effective ways to tame your Roborowski hamster. Some Roborowskis are very curious and friendly possibly because of what they've known since birth or what they are used to and their personality but a lot of Roborowskis are much more nervous or shy. It might be that your Robo is friendly but you're nervous to handle them and you want to know how to build up your confidence in doing this. In the first video in the mini series I talked about robos and about respecting their natural instincts and discussed whether or not to handle a roboroski. If you want to begin taming or to see if you can build a positive interactive relationship with your roboroski and to build your own confidence there are some steps that you can take and these steps have been developed from my own experience with a variety of robos as well as some research. So before you begin the taming process it's important to consider the environment. So clean hands this is important for your own confidence. If you've been touching hamster food your robo might at some point in the taming process come up to your hand thinking it's food if you're nervous of interacting it can help you to feel more confident if you know that your roborowski won't mistake your hand for food it's also good for hygiene purposes of course area so this is about safety for your roborowski and the area in which you are going to interact with them i would recommend interacting with your roborowski in its own area which is in their enclosure this is a space that they will recognise and it's a space that they can run and hide within. As you progress in the process, this area might become a safe room or a pen where you can let your Roborowski free roam. Roborowskis are most active at dawn, dusk and during the night and some Roborowskis will be more sensitive to light than others. It will be most natural for them to come out when it's dark so Keep the lighting low so that you can see what you're doing, but so that they can also feel comfortable. I've put the lights on in these clips so that I can film, but generally I do interact with my Roborowski with low lighting. Also, as your Roborowski becomes more confident and comfortable, they might be happier coming out in the light like mine is now. Morning or evening. So basically the time that you will need to be prepared to interact with your Roborowski. Never wake up your Roborowski to interact with them unless, of course, you have to visit a vet or there is an emergency. Let your Roborowski set the times that they come out. They'll develop their own routine and you will need to fit in with this routine whether you're a morning or evening person. During the night they will likely be out and about. It might be that you're asleep when they're out in which case you will need to be happy to not interact with them or to change your own routine. If you wake up your Robo to handle them, you might not have the most positive experience because it will be disturbing them. Sounds. This is important because loud noises, music, dogs barking, sudden noises can all stress out your Roborowski and you want to have a quiet, peaceful environment to handle them in, especially when you are building that trust, but also because they shouldn't be getting disturbed generally anyway. So all of those are good checks to do for your own confidence so that you know you're doing the best that you can to make the interaction positive and also for your Roborowski's safety and happiness and overall a nice calm experience for both. So once you have done these initial checks you can start building trust. In the first instance you might want to open the lid and sprinkle some food around the enclosure and talk very gently to your Roborowski, maybe say a phrase or make a noise if you want them to associate that with you and food. If your Roborowski is very shy or nervous or has even come from a abusive situation it might be that this is what you do for a good month or so possibly even longer before trying anything else. See how they react whether they are running and hiding from you or whether they start to come out when they know that you are there. Don't forget, once you have your Robo and you have put bedding into their enclosure, they will become familiar with your scent. And some Robos will, for example, come to a hand that they recognise, but not somebody else's. Sometimes they may become more curious by themselves and start running to where your hand is to take food from you. Or if they don't run away, you can try to offer them food from your fingertips. It could take a day to get to this point or it could take far longer. There is no set amount of time. It depends on the Roborowski. 
if you do get to the stage where you can offer them food from your fingertips, don't chase them around the enclosure. Hold your hands still and they will follow their nose and come to the food if they want to. Try to use something that they like, like a sunflower seed, for example. When handing them food with your fingertips, don't be nervous. They will only be interested in the food and they will take it with their mouth and possibly also their hands. Once they've taken the food, remove your hand from the enclosure because they might return to your fingers looking for the next bit. Move slowly and gently. You can continue to give them a treat each evening and what you're aiming for is for them to actually run to your hand when you put it into their enclosure. Once they do seem happy to run to your hand and they are trusting you and recognise you, you can move on to the next step. For the next step, you can put food onto the palm of your hand and put your palm into the enclosure. I would suggest resting on the bedding. Keep it still and they will usually explore your hand, climb onto it to get the food. If they are used to taking food from your fingertips, they might go straight up to your fingers and try to take food. This is where some people get nervous as they might gently nibble your finger or your hand to test if it's food, especially if it smells of their food. To help prevent this, as I said before, you can wash your hands and only touch the hamster food with your other hand, placing it directly into the palm of the hand you want your Roboroski to come onto. Try not to jump or quickly pull your hand out. They will then climb onto your hand and eat the food. It's likely that they'll sit in the palm of your hand whilst they deshell seeds or put food into their pouch or even eat it. A gentle test might happen. If this does happen, it will likely only happen once and from there, they will usually just jump straight into your hand and head straight for the food. Always keep still and don't try to stroke your Obrovsky whilst they're sat in your hand. Also resist the urge to lift your hand off the bedding or the surface as a movement might startle them. Or they might run and if you're holding them too high they could get injured. Once you and your Obrovsky are used to this, you can very slowly move a little bit lifting it up and down very gently but not too far away from the bedding, maybe turning it very slightly as well, just so that your Robrovsky gets used to movement whilst your hand is in the enclosure. And this will mean that you can be more relaxed moving forward when handling your Robrovsky. The next step from here would be to let your Robrovsky run over your hands, but as always, do this over your enclosure floor or when they're free roaming in a safe space when you are sitting on the floor, so never ever lift your Obrovsky high from the floor. Other than this, you can't really take the handling process much further with Robroskis. You don't want to be carrying them around the house or holding them while standing up for safety reasons. If your Obrovsky comes to you and climbs into your hand, it will make things like cleaning them out easier as you can lift them out and into a secondary enclosure whilst you clean out their main enclosure. And you can also hold them more easily in case of an emergency or when doing a health check. Robberoskis are very fast, even if you're completely confident with them and they are completely tame, you can never be sure that they won't suddenly make a run for it. However, as I said before, there is a possibility that your Robberoski won't ever want to be handled or that you yourself won't feel comfortable handling them and that's fine. The next video in this mini series is about how you can interact with a touch me not Robrovsky or if you don't feel comfortable handling your Robrovsky. Finally I wanted to stress that if your Robrovsky shows any signs of distress during these stages please don't continue they should lead the progress. I don't have any clips of my Robrovsky in distress as I don't stress her out. And I don't like giving views to people who are clearly stressing their Robrovskis and I don't like to see it myself as it's upsetting. So here are some happy clips of Pearl whilst I discuss signs of stress in Robos. Examples of signs of stress in include your Robo bringing out all the food that is in their cheek pouches. So this looks like spitting it all out or squeaking, chattering noises can indicate stress. And if they are trying to avoid your hand or jump out of your hand if they're running away and hiding. And also signs of aggression or self-protection like biting. I hope you found this useful. Do let me know about your own experiences handling Robrovskis and please don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video.